When I heard yesterday morning that Robinson Cano had signed a 10-year, $240 million contract with the Seattle Mariners, I had a bunch of mixed emotions. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't disappointed. I was kind of in between those two. The Yankees just lost their best player of the past five seasons. The Yankees just lost one of the many faces of their franchise, and the Yankees might have lost who, um, what could turn out to be the greatest second baseman in Major League Baseball history. And yet, I, I was okay with it. Um, you know, Robinson Cano had demanded the moon for the entire offseason with Jay-Z and Rock Nation. Um, you know, throughout the season and really throughout the past few weeks, I still felt that Cano would end up with the Yankees long term. I really did not expect anyone to really jump in. I thought it was the Yankees and Cano and they were kind of just the only two sides in this whole thing. And just a few days ago, the Mariners seemed to have jumped in it, jumped in it. Cano flew to Seattle. They negotiated. Apparently negotiations kind of were halted for a second and then an hour later you heard that Cano was signing with the Mariners and moving to the Northwest and going to play with the likes of Felix Hernandez, Kyle Seeger, um, Hisashi Iwakuma. Um, you know, there are a lot of solid players on Seattle, but I think we can all agree that they are not really that close to contending, um, or at least as close as the Yankees would have been if they had retained Cano. Um, you know, Cano had just been asking for so much money so much money and you know especially you know the 10 years um, that he got on his contract the Yankees knew that they were not going to go down that road again with what had happened with Alex Rodriguez now am I saying that he would have eventually been revealed to be a steroid cheat and would be injured half the time no but I think that's what you need to anticipate when you sign these huge deals and the Yankees know what they've gotten themselves into and what they're still battling with A-Rod and no matter how great Cano has been he's 31 a 10-year deal you know you're paying for what he has been and not for what he will be Cano's best years I would argue have already happened in the Bronx he may have a two three four maybe more elite seasons but um, I don't think it'll be worth $25, $26 million a year, whatever he is making with Seattle. So, um, I, as I said in my Ellsbury video, the Yankees letting him walk is a good decision that I, that I didn't anticipate but I wanted back in, earlier in the year. I'll post the link in the description to my video about Robinson Cano that I made I think in June or July down here. I explained why they shouldn't have kept him. And my main point was that if they just did not, if they try to get under 189 this year, didn't sign any big free agents, and let Cano go, you have a much more flexible payroll to work with next offseason and the offseasons after that when Teixeira's deal you know, wraps up, CeCe's Jeter salary comes off the books, each Euros, um, you know, there, were, there was a lot of, um, I was excited because I was excited to see what the Yankees would do with limited resources, getting younger, trusting their youth, but now that they have signed Jacoby Ellsbury, Brian McCann, and Carlos Beltran, that's all out the window. But I do think not having another $25 million a year player on the payroll is a good thing in any situation. Cano, of course, is a tremendous talent. He has been, he has been the best second baseman in Yankees history already. Um, he simply can do it all. You know, I've been defending for years that he is the best second baseman in baseball, and he certainly still is. Nothing against guys like Dustin Bedroya or when healthy Ian Kinsler or Chase Utley when he was once in that conversation. Cano is clearly the far superior player, does it all. Defense, power, contact, gets on base. Um, ironically, he doesn't steal that many bases for a second baseman. You normally consider them to be one of the faster guys on your team, but 
doesn't matter. He is he has been the total package for the Yankees throughout his whole career. He had one bad year in 2008, but he picked up the slack in 09, and then in 2010 blossomed into an elite top flight um, player. Um, you know, but when looking comparing his contract to other players who have gotten that type of money, it's it it shocks me. It's like the Ellsbury deal. Ellsbury has never been a guy that headlines the Red Sox. He's never been a guy that puts people in seats. Neither is Cano, yet he's up there with the contracts that Alex Rodriguez got with the Rangers and the Yankees, with Albert Pujols, um, Prince Fielder, um, you know, um, I can't think of the other players, but, you know, Cano has always been a great player, but he's never been the guy. He's never been. And that's, of course, a testament to Derek Jeter staying around in the core four and Alex Rodriguez when he was in his prime. Um, but, you know, Cano, I don't see how he's worth that money. So I think it's not a good deal for Seattle either, and I think it's a good move at the end of the day for the Yankees. It's going to be tough not seeing Cano at second base. I... I love Cano. Cano has been a great player, and I appreciate everything he's done. He's just has the most beautiful swing, makes the greatest plays at second base. Um, and, of course, you know, he made the final play of the 2009 World Series. You know, Joe Buck, you know, a ground ball to Cano. On to Teixeira. The Yankees are back on top. World champions for the 27th time. Uh, I just, um, you know, I just remember that forever, and I, I always will cherish that championship, I, I saw it live, and, um, you know, of course he said some pretty stupid things today, like saying he didn't want to play for Joe Girardi, he didn't like batting second, you know, I think it's pretty obvious that he was more in it for the money, and isn't necessarily the greatest team player, um, but, you know, Yankee fans just have to move on, they have to appreciate what he's done, and, I mean, you know, when he comes to Seattle, when he comes to New York, you can boo him, you can cheer him. I'm indifferent, you know. I mean, because um, Cano had the potential to play his whole career with the Yankees, be a Yankee lifer, get his number retired, be the first Dominican player to be enshrined in Monument Park, all those things that have already been discussed. And Cano's had a great career to date, and I expect him to continue with that illustrious career in Seattle but only to a certain extent before he starts breaking down and the contract becomes an albatross. Because 10-year deals don't work out. I don't think they will at all, um, especially for anyone over the age of 30. You simply should not be paying for a guy in his late 30s and 40s. You know, you should not still be paying them in excess of $20 million. That is just ludicrous to me. You sign a guy to a 10-year deal when he's 25, 26, 27, and you hope for the best, not when they're 31, 32, 33. Um, so, you know what? In the end, it sucks the way he left, but um, it's for the best for the Yankees. And in the, in the immediate term, it'll drive up interest in the Mariners in Seattle. They have a new TV deal, and they have some core pieces that they could work with. I'm not one of those guys who say, oh, Seattle's going to suck for the whole contract. The Mariners will be good eventually. They do. They, they will. They could even contend for a wild card spot next year. I wouldn't put it past that. P past them. They need a lot more help. But let's say they acquire David Price. Now you're really talking with David Price, Felix Hernandez, Iwakuma. How are you going to beat any of those guys in a in a, in a short game? In a, you know in a short um, in a five game series in the in the, in the division series. Um, you know that's just my opinion. Mariners need a lot more work to do. But adding Cano is a big plus for them in the short term, as is adding Ellsbury to the Yankees in the short term, but I think both contracts will not work out the way either team wants it to, and luckily for the Yankees, for once, they are not responsible for both of those contracts. So, goodbye, Robinson Cano. Thank you for everything you've done for the Yankees, and good luck in Seattle, and um, whoever is taking the ground balls at second base next season, good luck. It could be Kelly Johnson, Omar Infante, Brandon Phillips, who knows. Um, but when we do know, I will let you guys all know, and I will give you my thoughts and opinions on whatever may come next for the Yankees this offseason. So thanks for watching. Goodbye, Robbie Cano. Don't you know?
that you are no longer a New York Yankee.